welcome, welcome to, to episode, episode 30, 30 of Sports Stuff, Stuff Hub Live. Live. We, we are enjoying, enjoying a nice, nice sunny, sunny beautiful, beautiful day, day here in here Seattle. Seattle. Uh, uh, not, not normally like this, this uh, in, April in April for us, but, but I'm going to take, take it. it. We're, we're supposed, supposed to be hitting, hitting 70s, 70s up, up to even 80 this coming week, week here in Seattle, which is, again, kind of shocking for this time of year. Major feedback. That's, That's fun. fun. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Does that fix anything? I got some new equipment, which I don't hear any feedback on my end. Better? I don't know why it did that. Um... <clears throat> Is it only when I talk, or is it just was it just straight through? Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, beautiful weather here in Seattle, and uh, that's kind of unusual for April. But hey, I'm gonna take it. Um, some cool stuff, some cool updates. We have the full-on break station up and ready to go for tomorrow. Just as kind of a uh, preview for you guys. Um, it uh, it's nice because I've got both cameras up now, and it's as simple as this to change over to the brake camera. Boom, boom. Instead of having to adjust and use a different camera, now we are uh, we're golden. So I'm gonna actually minimize this while I'm thinking about this, but that is how it's gonna go from now on. Uh, we've got a separate microphone now because the microphone on the built-in for the cameras was not very good. Uh, this one's okay, but I've actually got a really nice one that I bought uh, about a month, month and a half ago. But I'm going to wait and set that one up until we get the new studio built because it's a full-on stand. with It's the big, round, uh, more for like a studio. Uh, but I'll probably use that one more for the podcast anyways. Um, cause it's kind of, like I said, it's bulky and, uh, this one is right here. And if I get a little closer here, the smooth sounds of Ryan, <clears throat> which I will probably at some point put the mic up closer here cause it sounds just me listening to it right now a million times better. Um, I just unfortunately don't have a mount for it right now. When the studio is all done, I will have a microphone right here 24-7. Well, not 24, but you know what I mean. I do like that, though. Wow, that sounds nice. I gotta put this... Wow, that is a huge difference than going way down here. Huge difference. Maybe I'll just hold it like this. I like this. It's almost like back to my radio DJ days. You're listening to Bison Thunder Radio. <laughs> oh, man. So, not a lot of M NFL drama over the last week, but uh, Sports Card World, uh, we all saw Select Football hit the market last week and just took over everything the amount of people scrambling to get select football right now is ridiculous what was a fourteen hundred and fifty dollar box for pre-order with most retailers is now up to two thousand dollars a box at several um, and it's gotten absolutely ridiculous I think the product is fantastic they knocked it out of the park this this year especially with adding the fourth tier uh, before we've always had concourse, premier, and field level. Now they added club level, and it, it they they did a great job with it. Um, I picked up a box at the last card show this last weekend, and um, I couldn't not rip it. It was it's too nice. I it was too tempting. I couldn't I couldn't sit. So I ripped it. And it was, um, I mean, there was nothing huge, 
but it was fun and it was it's a good looking rip i did pull a joe burrow silver i don't think it was concourse it might have been club level i don't have it next to me right now um but there was like three joe burrow rookies in it zero herberts uh a tua one hertz and one love but zero herberts <clears throat> and i made a comment today on twitter one of the things i'm noticing with select is it's heavy one way or the other it's rare that it does both ways with herbert and burrow you're either getting like two to five burrows per box or two to five herberts per box there's no middle ground and that's what I've been noticing anyways. I've I've easily watched a hundred anywhere from fifty to a hundred breaks, boxes being ripped. Um and it, it's such a fun product. I really enjoy it. And a lot of these boxes are just absolutely loaded. And when I say loaded, I mean colored parallels. Um it, so many low numbered parallels even the autos and stuff you're seeing a lot of stuff that's under 99 and uh, it's a lot of fun to see i i have really been enjoying watching everybody else's box rips which is then getting me or excuse me getting me hyped for tomorrow night we have two boxes of select football to rip tomorrow night uh, a box of prism basketball a box of tribute baseball and a box of Contenders Optic Football, all this year's product. <clears throat> and all of it is looking fantastic. I went to uh, Collector's Corner Northwest the other day. Kind of went a little overboard on Optic Contenders. <clears throat> Ripped more than I should have. Um, but it was a lot of fun, and I loved the look of the product. Um, because it's, it's not like, I'm not usually a, a contenders chaser. And part of that is because it's so ridiculously base card heavy. And it's this, just the same crap over and over again. And you're really only chasing the hits there. The parallels are few and far between the inserts to be quite honest, suck. And then you get like five autos in the box and four of them end up being trash and one of them ends up being on on card and nine times out of ten it's a bad auto i finally did get a two out of um regular contenders though but contenders optic we've had this discussion before i'm a color chaser i like the parallels i like grabbing all those low numbers and the neat inserts that are low numbered and the silvers and the hollows or whatever you want to refer to them as so for me contenders optic is a home run because that's my type of go-to product where i have a lot of fun even if it's a smaller amount of cards you get in the box you get what eight cards in the box six cards in the box here i got it sitting right here actually <clears throat> our break for tomorrow it doesn't actually even say oh here we go nope that just says Derek carr uh find two autographs and one including one on card But it doesn't say how many cards in a box. I believe it's six, though, because you get two autographs, two base, a parallel, and an insert or parallel. Um, so six cards in a box. And to me, because it's parallel heavy, that's the chase, obviously. It's a fun product to me. And so, like I said, I went a little overboard um and i ended up hitting a tua auto out of 90 or no out of 75 and then a chase young auto out of 99 
and then a two of parallel out of 199 a, i think a clyde edwards l air numbered out of 199 but either way i hit some pretty good stuff out of it and it was a lot of fun even though i spent more than i had planned to it was kind of one of those things where the deal that i got was like okay shout out to collector's corner northwest on the hookup <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about, Tony. See, big fan of, big fan of Contenders Optic. Same here. Yeah. Uh, Taylor, have all the spots sold? No, we're about half, a little over half on Contenders Optic. Um, most likely, I'm, I kind of figured with the rest of it, I knew Select was going to sell fast, um, but I'm kind of anticipating a big push the last day. Um, a lot of people don't like buying into breaks early because they don't want their money tied up. And I'm okay with that. I don't mind if they wait. <clears throat> what A lot of what sold so far was mostly people who never broke with me in the past. So a lot of my longtime guys that I had from when I was breaking a few years ago haven't even jumped in yet. So I'm sitting here going, well, we sold out all the select. Now... I do have some more product coming, well, tomorrow and Friday. So I'll be loading more breaks for next week's breaks on the website on Thursday. I'm not going to get any basic select again uh, because that is going to be ridiculous. Uh, there's no way in hell I'm going to pay sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars a box and try to sell those breaks. That's that's not the point of what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, that's just no, no bueno. Uh, did Prism sell out? No, Prism is uh, about a third full right now. Um, and again, I know a bunch of people that hadn't bought their spots yet who messaged me and said that they were going to be in. So I'm not worried. Either way we're good so <clears throat> but um we have things like origins coming out tomorrow that's a fun product i'm looking forward to that select h2 hybrid comes out friday i think which will have the discos and stuff like that in it so that'll be fun i'm going to try to get my hands on a couple boxes of that because hey if we can do a little bit cheaper select break even though it's the h2 and probably less cards per box actually you know what i'm going to look it up you know i got a computer sitting right in front of me i might as well use it sorry i'm watching the mariners game at the same time as this they had a double header today and uh props to them for taken down the Orioles in extra innings but right now they is losing the second game mid sixth they're down six to four oh let's see here select h2 looks like they're gonna ship my order tomorrow I'll see it Friday, so it'll be here in plenty of time to break on Wednesday. So that means I can put that on the website on Thursday to start pre-selling spots. So a box is six cards per pack, 24 packs, or excuse me, not 24. Uh, six cards per pack, 24, I keep four times six, uh, four packs per box, so 24 cards, whereas the hobby are 5 and 12 so significantly more cards here um two and a half times more cards in the hobby box than h2 so looking at what i paid for this this versus what I'm paying technically tomorrow uh, for select H2. 
I might be able to make that break even cheaper because I am I'm paying a little bit less for these obviously um, I oh, can't wait to get my accounts back at full speed that'll be nice so select h2 expect a break um, origins basketball I'm gonna run one um, I am getting my hands on another optic contenders which I think is going to be a big product for breaking it's gonna be a lot of fun I'm, I'm trying to get my hands on a full sealed 10 box case and if we can get a full sealed 10 yeah. um, it's just I doubt it's gonna be $14 per spot unless I can get a really good deal on that case but anyway we are going to have a lot of fun tomorrow. I'm going to go live tomorrow about uh, 4 o'clock Pacific time is when the camera is going to go on. And we're just going to break as we go. And hopefully all the spots get sold out uh, before I go live tomorrow. That's, that's the plan. And uh, as long as that happens, we're golden. We can fly right through all five breaks. I can give some uh, packs of uh, Bowman first away. And uh, it's going to be a banging night, I think. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of heads up on... Uh-oh, hang on. There we go. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of heads up on how this is going to look, uh, I kind of showed Shane to Starks. He was the first in the room tonight. But... Boom! Changing right over to the brake camera because I got the second camera up and running. Functional streaming for both. The only thing I got to do is just adjust my screen as uh, where I'm going to actually have the camera pointed. That's kind of what tonight is, is a test run to see how um, the cards are on camera and how much room I'm going to need. And uh, yeah microphone two cameras as soon as we get the studio built i'm probably going to get another two cameras because we're going to have some people in studio it's going to be a lot of fun so big things happening um over into the world of sports oh wait what do we got i got a game at 6 p.m tomorrow so hope i can catch up uh well we're going live at four david um, so if you can catch it beforehand a little bit, uh, but otherwise, yeah, uh, it'll be up so you can actually rewind and whatnot during it. And on, um, as long as YouTube doesn't have any problems with editing, I'll have all the breaks posted probably the next morning. Um, like I said, it all just depends on YouTube's editing. Oh, let's see. The world of football. We did have one development today. <clears throat> we did have a former Pittsburgh Steeler that will not be returning. James Conner has signed with the Arizona Cardinals. I'm saddened, but I'm happy for him. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for him. I think he's actually going to have a big season. So if you have, if you're not aware, uh, Kenyon Drake did not return to the Arizona Cardinals this year, or for for this year. He in fact is now with the Raiders, leaving Chase Chase Edmonds as the primary running back in Arizona. So they had some room. James Conner has passed all his physicals, signed with the Arizona Cardinals today which could bode well for him because his, I believe his biggest season of his career was in 2018. The running backs coach that was with the Steelers at the time is now the running backs coach for the Cardinals. So, good pairing. James Conner might be worthy of RB1 in your fantasy leagues. Just saying, just saying. As a guy who likes to think he knows quite a bit about the Steelers, I probably really don't, but I like to think I do. 
James Conner is actually a stud. There's no argument about him not being a stud other than the fact that he's been hurt a fair amount in the last couple seasons. And if he can stay healthy, he's good. Last year, Steelers had a horrible offensive line issues. I wouldn't put what happened with him last year on his shoulders at all. That pure was offensive game plan and offensive line issues, purely. Uh, a couple more of the comments. Uh, totally didn't even know Connor was a free agent. Correct. He was on the open market. Uh, same with Juju. Juju obviously resigned. That was actually kind of tough to say. Juju actually resigned with the Steelers already. James Connor was a free agent. Um, and I don't believe I even heard any rumors of any deals that the Steelers even offered for him to come back. He has literally just been kind of shopping for a home uh, since free agency started. Uh, Dogecoin Baby, says Zeus. Absolutely. I've got about 3,000 shares that I bought uh, right as it hit one penny. And uh, I'm not an investing expert at all, and I don't ever give people investing advice. But thank you to the people who referred me to Dogecoin, which uh, Zeus would be one of the uh, two main contributors to my doginess. Uh, Ivan at Watch the Breaks, some of you guys are familiar with, uh, was also another person that I had extensive conversations about Le Doge. And I ended up pulling the trigger at about one penny per. Um, I think it was a little under. And I bought 3,000 some shares. As of today, it's like 350 or 360 dollars worth now, and it was I I, I didn't even spend 50 bucks, so <clears throat> pretty happy with that return. Let me take a look. I'm gonna pull up my Robinhood account. Free plug for Robinhood. It's actually at 11 cents per share right now, and I own 3,608 shares. If you can see that right there, 3,608 shares didn't even cost me 50 bucks. I'm a hold the line guy with the Dogecoin. I don't know crap about investing, by the way. Zero. Don't know anything about it. Downloaded the Robin Hood app just to buy that a couple what, months ago. So don't take my advice on investing. It's not what I'm here for. I'm here for sports, baby. Sports, sports, baby. So yeah, James Connor, congratulations on your contract. Wish you well. Um, and again, I think the uh, Cardinals are going to be a good fit for him. That Cardinals team is looking stacked this year. Holy crap. They are going to be a contender. I mean, yeah, A.J. Green has had his injury issues, but when he's on the field, he's still dynamic. You put him with DeAndre Hopkins, and if Larry Fitzgerald does come back, the ageless wonder, Kyler Murray... James Conner, Chase Edmonds. That's a damn good offense. And they've got a good offensive line. And they've got a pretty good defense. Picking up J.J. Watt this year. Mm. Could you imagine? Because a lot of times this happens. A lot of... Yeah, Christian Kirk. That's another one. Good one. Uh, there's, there's actually... A, a lot of times you'll see where <clears throat> players and coaches tend to shift between two teams or you'll see a lot of transactions that tend to happen between two specific teams. For the last 20-ish years, the Arizona Cardinals and the Pittsburgh Steelers have actually done a fair amount of 
trading of players without trading players and coaches. If you remember, Ken Wisenhunt took the Arizona Cardinals to the Super Bowl against the Pittsburgh Steelers with Kurt Warner as his quarterback. Ken Wisenhunt used to be the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers. When he went to Arizona, he took Russ Grimm, offensive line coach, with him to Arizona. Then, you had a bunch of players that shifted over, guys like Larry Foote, James Ferrier all played there. Uh, Richard Mendenhall ended up going there for a season. So you see a lot of guys that have bounced over one way or the other. Steelers have also gotten a few of the former Cardinals players as well. Bruce Arians, when he unofficially retired, he used to be the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers as well, and they kind of forced his retirement upon him. And then he came back, and he was the coach for the Colts. He was the interim head coach because he was the offensive coordinator. Interim head coach for the, for the Colts during the Chuck Pagano cancer era. Bruce Arians went on to be coach of the year because he led them to the AFC Championship game, I believe. And uh, shortly thereafter, he took the head coaching job in Arizona. So another stealer to Arizona Cardinal, which then created even more players shifting over. And we still see it happening today. It's actually kind of fun to see. And kind of one of the reasons why I, I do cheer a little bit for the Cardinals to do well um, because they end up with a lot of our guys. Correct. Joey Porter actually did play a season there. Joey Porter, though, spent the majority of his non-Steeler time as a Dolphin. But he did play one season with the Cardinals. <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, Arizona Cardinals... Look like they could be dangerous this year, but again, it's all on paper. We have no clue what's actually going to happen. Uh, so in a couple minutes here, we've got a special guest joining us. We have Mark Magana, and uh, he will be with us probably within the next, let's see what time I got him for, 6.30. He'll probably be with us here in, in the next minute or two. Hopefully he hasn't messaged me telling me he can't get on. Because it is, it is 6.20, okay. But... So he should be here any minute. We've got a lot to go over tonight. So him and I tonight are going over the San Francisco 49ers and what they're going to do at number three. And then whether or not Sam Darnold can succeed in Carolina now that he's been traded. And then we're also going to discuss what the Falcons should do with their number four overall pick. So we're going to be breaking all that down tonight. Mark's probably going to be honest with 45 minutes tonight. Um, and then to end, before he leaves, if we get time, we're going to try to push through this. We're going to talk a little bit of Lakers to end because Mark's a big Lakers guy and he covers the Lakers and is dropping a dime podcast. So we're going to try to get into that as well. Um, Hopefully we have time. I know a lot of times when I bring a guest on, um, don't always get time to hit the the non-football sports talk that we're aiming for. I know we've had that issue with Dean a few times where Dean and I will be going back and forth and all of a sudden, oh, crap, we didn't get time to talk about the Mariners at all or, or the Rainiers or anything like that. So it's uh, hopefully we get time tonight. So it looks like uh, we got Mark on, and I think we're ready to go. Uh, Mark, give me the thumbs up if you're ready to go. Can you hear me? Perfect. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a man who is featured in Red Cup News, uh, been on the Pro Football Network, Fox Sports, Bucks Reports, and the uh, co-host of the Dropping a Dime podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up, Mark Magania. <laughs> I do my best, sir. I got to hold my microphone, though, because uh, I've always had my microphone set way down here, and I never really paid that much of attention to it. And then when I was screwing around as I got going live tonight, I picked it up, and I was like, ooh, sexy voice, Ryan. And I was like, I like this. <clears throat> so 
I need to get a mic stand because this sucker from now on is going right here. That that looks really bad on camera. It's going to go right here every night from now on. Um, Uh-oh. Oh, hang on. Uh, they're saying they can't hear you. Hang on. Uh-oh. I can hear you. They are saying they cannot. Did that help at all? How about, How about that, that guys? guys? Can you hear him now? Hello, 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 hello. I could I hear him hear just, just fine, fine. But, apparently but apparently our audience, our audience at, home at home could not. Could not. Testing, testing, okay. testing okay. ones. We're good. We're good. They can they hear can you now, Mark. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so. hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Welcome again, again, Mark. Mark. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for joining sir. me thanks tonight. tonight. How's everything How's going down there? Thanks for having me on. How's everything, How's everything going, going down, down there in beautiful, beautiful Southern, Southern California. California? Yeah, good. We got a, we had a little overcast and a little bit of rain today. So, you know, California folks were like, what's going on? Like, this is easy. Why is it not 76 and sunny? Uh, <laughs> but it's a nice, it's a nice change up for, uh, I, I love the rain. We don't get it. Obviously we don't get it that much. So it's nice to have it though. And uh, yeah, busy day, but nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. What about yourself? Getting ready for the break. Thanks, man. I've been watching. I've been seeing your uh, your posting about that. Absolutely. Getting excited. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. Tomorrow, Tomorrow night's, night's the big, big relaunch. relaunch. I've got, I've got uh, everything, uh, all everything all set up. up. I, got I got both, both cameras, cameras now. now. This, this camera you're watching me on is actually my new, my new uh, uh, HD camera, camera that I bought, that I bought an, actual an actual video, video camera. camera. Okay. And then I've got the webcam now as the break cam. So I've actually got that all set up. So hopefully things go off without a hitch. Yeah. 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 So no, I'm looking forward to it. Sure, I'll be tuning in. What's that? What's that? Yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying I'm looking forward to tuning in, checking it out. I, I I've been thinking about getting back into breaking, you know, breaks, especially now that you're back. And I think I think you were the first break I had ever done. <laughs> and I pulled uh I pulled a, a Wentz rookie. Uh I, I bought a couple spots. It was years ago. But anyways, yeah, that's uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it all happen again. I believe, I believe that, that was, was Phoenix, Phoenix football. football. That was, I think first, that was that was yeah. the first, first Wentz, Wentz um, autos, autos and RPAs, and RPAs that, I that I had pulled, and I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure, sure you had, had the Eagles, Eagles in that, in that case. case. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and, I'm pretty oh, sure it was. A, and the and prism. prism. Yeah, we did do a prism yep. as well. Yeah, I, I know I had bought the Bucks in them because I had a, a couple numbered the, of the prism. I think I have a Mike Evans bird and some other stuff yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and i remember, I remember you, you had, had the bucks, bucks and gold, gold standard, standard that, that one case, case and, and yeah uh, we, uh, we pulled that chris godwin, godwin with, that with that just, just mm -hmm. filthy, filthy disgusting, disgusting jumbo, jumbo patch, patch. It was like the patch yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah yeah i was, I was like, like mark i don't know what a shit shits to you yeah i got a i had a really i had a really good couple of breaks whenever i broke what you know with you i always i ended up doing well so that's what yeah. I'm saying. I got to go back. You know, you got to give it another shot. So man, to see, you know. I'm yeah, sure you're yeah. one of these days uh, watching watching the break. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, looking I'm looking forward, forward to it. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, obviously, a lot has changed, changed since, since then. then. Uh, mm -hmm. obviously, obviously, number one thing that's thing changed is the price. price. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're not doing full case breaks like we were before because quite literally, you know, that would cost everybody five times, ten times what it's costing now. But on top of that, getting the product is just such a beast right now. Right, right. So, That's what I've heard. Yeah. 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 I just, I just, I, I don't, I don't get, cases get cases and ever. And, ever. and, and so, so it's like, like if, if I, I ever, ever do get anything, anything wholesale wise, wise it's, like it's like a box. box. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, awesome. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. I know the, I know the market has changed immensely. I know we were talking about it the other day too. Uh, Pops are another huge, you know, thing yeah. right now. And, and Pokemon cards, like everything collectible. Uh, it feels like has gone up. Well, a lot of things. So that's a, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Especially being a collector, you enjoy it. Like you said, it does hurt a little bit once you get into the side of it, but what'll happen is fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, 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 so, and pops, you know, you know, been doing, been doing those, those for years, years and, and they've, they've really, really taken, taken off again. again. 
Um, yeah. And, 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 and it's funny because some, some of the stuff, stuff that I had, had from, from, you know, five, five six, six years, years ago that was, that was $10, ten pops back, pops back, back in the day, they're now $40, $50, $60. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah. crap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now they're now saying, they're saying they, got they got Echo from me. From me. Uh-oh. Man. <laughs> Man, <laughs> killing, killing me. Uh, uh, hang on, let me under. change over, over on this real, this real quick and see, and see if. if... No, nope, that's, that's not, not it. Not it. Uh, uh, just give, just me, give one me one second, second and I'm going to try, try to fix, fix said that. Yeah, no worries. So, no, 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 How about, are you guys able to hear me? Does that help? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> I, cause I can hear you, Mark, and I know you can hear me. I can tell because yeah. I can hear it in my, but can they hear me? Better. Okay, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Playing with settings and pushing buttons sometimes Tech. fixes everything. Yeah. I don't know what I just did. You I did found a mic yeah. Oh. <laughs> I found a microphone icon and I clicked it off. <laughs> and now it's working. You're so, good? Yeah. All, all right. right. So let's get into some football talk here, Mr. Magania. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna cover a few things here, and I know we were talking about this before. Starting off tonight, let's talk the 49ers with yeah. their trade up at number three. Yeah. Now, general consensus around the NFL, obviously, and I think outside of the NFL even, is that Trevor Lawrence is going number one overall. Yeah. And then it also sounds like number two overall is going to be Zach Wilson. Yeah. I don't know if there's any debate about that. Is there in your mind? Uh, should there be? No. Is there? Probably. I mean, I'd say maybe a little bit of debate with Zach Wilson at two. Um, I like Justin Fields a lot. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of a debate. Trevor at one, I don't think is a debate. I think two, I could see why they go Zach Wilson. Exactly. Uh, Justin Fields a little bit more than Zach Wilson. Um, I can see why they go Zach Wilson. And then I think three, like you said, three is probably the, the first real, you know, quote unquote question or, foggy situation as to what's happening there so and here's one of the odd things that i've been hearing which blows me away for let's see we're in april so for the last four months mm -hmm. the general consensus was that justin fields was the number two and yeah. then <laughs> around mid, mid to late february zach wilson all of a sudden became starts shooting the up number boards. two yeah yeah well, now, over the last week to two weeks, I'm now hearing reports that if Justin Fields isn't drafted second overall, he could potentially slip as much as down to 10, which <laughs> yeah. blows me away how a guy yeah. goes from literally being one of the top college quarterbacks and a potential 1-2 candidate to being the number 10 and there hasn't been a damn game of football that's been played by him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did nothing to get there, only just show out at his pro day. Um, right. Much. And that, that, that's confusing. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. I don't know. It, you know, every year at draft season, it seems like we we do this with, with different guys. You kind of, you over, I don't know if NFL teams overthink it or if new thing that they come up with that they didn't know during the season, but I mean, watching Justin Fields play and then watching his pro day and then hearing his unofficial 40 time. I know we had some crazy 40 times for a lot of people this year. And um, yeah. so I think that's a, you know, that's definitely a question mark, but still, the, you know, even if it's not exact in the ballpark of t how fast he ran as a quarterback is, is pretty incredible. And I don't really know, I don't really know what he did to drop in the minds of people in the NFL, but it seems like he just did. Um, so it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting conundrum there. I'm not really sure why, um, but I, to me, I like Justin Fields as a better prospect over Zach Wilson. And that's not really an indictment Zach Wilson. It's not necessarily saying, oh, Zach Wilson isn't that good. It's just saying, I really think Justin Fields is that much better. Um, and as to why other teams 
or teams in the NFL, I guess, don't um, feel the same way, I guess. So if you, from what I'm hearing from the last uh, couple minutes, then if you're San Francisco sitting at number three <clears throat> and Trevor Lawrence goes one, Zach Wilson goes two, it should be a no brainer. Then Justin Fields at yeah. three. Yeah, I kind of feel like it should be a no-brainer. But then I think what gives me a little bit of pause is the fact that when you look at Shanahan's, what Shanahan has done, where he's worked, he hasn't really worked with the quarterback very much like Justin Fields. Then you have the idea Mac Wilson of Alabama is, you know, everybody's super excited, everybody's super jazzed on him. He has been another guy that shot up draft boards. And I saw a mock draft just today that had the Niners passing on Justin Fields uh, for Mac Wilson. So, and, and that kind of makes a little bit more sense. He, he, a little bit more similar to a Matt Ryan type guy, which is what Shanahan has had uh, in the past. And I don't know that Shanahan from, I could see in his recent uh, couple years of the dating back to 2013, he hasn't really worked with a guy that's a dual threat, like, like Justin Fields. So maybe the Mac Wilson, you know, is the guy that they're looking at. I, I don't think it's a smart move, but I mean, how many times have <laughs> NFL this is, you know, overthink a guy and, and make a jump. You know, a guy like Mitch Trubisky, uh, Daniel Jones, those guys flew up draft boards and it seemed like nobody was talking about him. And then, like you said, mid-February, everybody was like, yeah, that's the guy. And then, you know, you see the Bears go do that with Mitch Trubisky. And so it could be a similar issue with Mac Wilson. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens. If it was me, if I'm making the decision, there's there's no question it's Justin Fields for me. Um, you know, they were 21, they were 21st out of 32 in points for the Niners last year. Um, and they really struggled. They had a lot of injuries, but they have some weapons there. I mean, there's, there's some weapons there. Um, obviously Kittle is fantastic. Uh, Ayuk, you know, those are some guys and they have, you know, a couple running backs. So there's some weapons for whoever goes. And the other thing is when you look at a team that's coached by Shanahan, you don't expect them to be 21st out of 32 in points for expect that because he's supposed to be Sean McVay type of mind on offense right that's that was the whole that year that he, you know uh, hired everybody's like oh we're looking for the next Sean McVay okay well Shanahan comes and he has a brilliant offensive mind and then they are 21st out of 32 on offense um and there's more potential there than that even even with the more potential there so but they did have like I said they did have a tough year with injuries so yeah they were they got absolutely decimated on the offensive and defensive side of the ball they did yeah <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, Kittle played in only half the season. Ayuk missed five or six games. Yeah. Obviously, Jimmy Garoppolo didn't even play in – he didn't even play in six games. Um, but, um, yeah, it's it seems to me – and that's one of the things that I've been noticing with Kyle Shanahan's offense as I'm going through and looking at all the different stuff. They're talking about how, you know, he'll sometimes run some read options and stuff. And there was a highlight that somebody just posted of C.J. Bethard running a bootleg. And I'm like, he's <laughs> not fast. I mean, he picked up the first down. He picked up like 12, 13 yards. But, I mean, imagine a Justin Fields. Imagine a Trey Lance yeah. taking that. I mean, Trey Lance has taken that to the house. Right. He is he is by far the fastest quarterback in the, in the first round consideration for the draft mm -hmm. picks. Yeah. And he's he's easily the most mo most mobile. <clears throat> and so the the difference is though is Shanahan has typically liked his pocket passer. Right. Yeah, and that's gonna right. be that would be, you know, if Trevor Lawrence, if Zach Wilson, if Mac Jones. So it all kind of depends on yeah. either and that's what it sounded like based on what they traded up for when John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan came out and said we're content with either of the two guys that we're chasing. Yeah. Doesn't matter which one, whether it's Zach Wilson or Mac Jones, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the jets all of a sudden throw a curveball and go Justin Fields, then yeah. 49ers potentially looking at going with Zach Wilson and they get an upgrade over the guy that they currently, I believe are in for which would be mac jones yeah yeah and that's why yeah that's what that's what that's what gave me pause too because i think if you look at talent wise you see justin fields i think is at the very least as talented as uh zach wilson um but 
then you have that question of, you know, Shanahan not really, like you said, Shanahan not really working with the dual threat. He, he likes more of a Matt Ryan type of guy. And so, yeah, that, that kind of tells you that I think, I think the Niners are most happy in that situation that you just said, where the Jets take uh, Justin Fields and there is Wilson and they're, they're stoked, you know, they run up to the podium and, and, and pick him. I think that's uh, the best case scenario for them. But I mean, they weren't in they weren't in bad position last year. I mean, five and seven at one point, and then three straight losses to the football team, the Cowboys, um, and 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 it, you know they weren't doing horribly. Just the injuries derailed them. But I think everybody has given them a little, you know, that they've had over the past couple of years. But I think that the you know the uh, the time is out. I think for for them, and I think John Lynch has done a really good job, and I think Shanahan has done. Uh, a decent job with what he's been given, but they really do need a, a slam dunk here. And that's why I think if Zach Wilson's there, that's great for them. Um, but I mean, man, if, if it's Matt ends up being the guy at three, the way we think it's going to play out, that's, that's tough. That's real tough. Um, especially if they pass, like I said, that, that would be assuming that they would pass on fields. Um, yeah. That would be a tough situation for, for the front office and the head coach. Cause I think next year, if we see a similar type year to what they had this year in Series or not, I don't know that he can. I don't know that he can survive another year like that. Well, and my my curiosity with the 49ers for this year is going to be how they handle a new defensive coordinator and a new offensive yeah. coordinator because both Salah and Lafleur are gone, mm-hmm. and so that's going to end up putting more on Shanahan's plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's, I haven't even seen who stepped into the DC role for the 49ers. But I mean, Salah was good. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, completely he did his job changed well. their defense over the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and that's that's some big shoes to fill. For sure, for sure, and that's why that's why it's a tough it's a tough position that they're in at three. Um, it really is because especially with the Jets, you know, making the trade and moving Darnold, then it became a lock to take back, and that just made it that much tougher for them um, to kind of make that. But who knows? Maybe if around and Trevor is gone and Zach is gone maybe they move back a few spots for somebody who's super sold on Justin Fields you know somebody that's like hey we need a Justin Fields and they trade up I, I don't I, I don't see even no matter what happens with one and two I don't see the 49ers trading out though because they traded up to get it and they paid a yeah. lot for it yeah so yeah. I don't really see them trading back down yeah yeah I mean the one thing I will say I would say would probably be one of the most glorious scenes ever to take place at an NFL draft (laughs) is if the Jacksonville Jaguars put their pick in and they take Kyle Pitts number one overall or Jamar Chase (laughs) one overall and Gardner Minshew walks out with his (laughs) denim shirt buttoned all the way down and that glorious mullet that he has and and uh urban meyer walks out and urban meyer now has a big handlebar mustache <laughs> and he's grown out a, a, a mullet and those two start dancing on the stage and give jamar chase or kyle pitts a big hug and welcome him to jacksonville <laughs> that would be that would be epic that would be that would be uh elite level elite level trolling there <laughs> I mean, I don't think Urban Meyer would do it, but I 100% think that Gardner Minshew would do that. Oh, Minshew would absolutely do that it. Pick. Oh, yeah. No question. No question. Yeah. He's all about that kind of stuff. He, oh you God. get the vibe that he, he he buys into what, you know, his image. He's all for it. Oh, yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you see uh, his Instagram the other day, that photo shoot that he did? I did see the photo. Yeah, I saw the photo. But did you read what he – uh, what he posted, what he said about his style change. I've got no. to this. Oh my God. It was the funniest thing. I read this to my <laughs> wife last night and she was like, like she saw the, I showed her the pictures and she's just like, what a clown. And I was like, no, you got to <laughs> listen to this. And she just busted out laughing. She goes, okay. What he said just made it sound, made it sound a million times better. Better. His, on his Instagram, I'm Instagram. just gonna read this because I don't have yeah. it. I don't have it handy to post up on the screen, but <clears throat> he puts. Yesterday we said goodbye to the dirty diesel drapery, which is referring to his hair <laughs> and his the way his mustache was. And he said, which for raw power was second to none, obviously. <laughs> but we say hello to the more refined platinum power pelt. <laughs> 
meticulously crafted for a sleek and aerodynamic design. The Pelt is built not only for speed, but also for pleasure. <laughs> that I love that it. On his love it. Instagram. <laughs> He's hard the, not to like, man. <laughs> oh, I know. And it's like, he, to me, so I, I'm not a, I'm, I know I live in Washington, but I'm not a Husky fan. I'm not a mm. Coug fan, obviously. You, everybody that knows me knows I'm a, a North Dakota State Bison. Right. So I don't usually pay attention to a lot of the college football in Washington. And so, to me, this guy comes out of nowhere. To the nowhere, Jackson right, the right. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is this guy? And That's immediately, funny. I'm like, I like this guy. <laughs> he My guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. But yeah. anyway, getting off topic, I just thought that was <laughs> no, great. Because, That's hilarious. <laughs> because that, that photo shoot mm. is epic level and i just think that would be amazing if the jaguars go elsewhere with number one and he comes out on stage to either announce <laughs> the pick or welcome the pick <clears throat> now i will say that i would i i i would probably say it would be the biggest letdown in nfl history if any if any other position other than quarterback goes number one overall in this draft <laughs> yeah. with how much hype yeah. has been put on Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. and how much hype has been put on the other four <laughs> quarterbacks that are really being considered in the first round. If any <laughs> other position goes in the first goes number one overall, that would go down in the record books for the biggest let down in NFL history for number one overall. It would. Yeah, it absolutely would. And, you know, it would, it would <laughs> if it does happen that way, it would kind of suck for the player that gets picked number one overall. Cause you know, it's an exciting time for him. Everybody's like, well, where's the quarterbacks? Right. But um, no, I mean, do you think I, I don't, man, if the Jags pass on Trevor, <laughs> now you're even like oh my gosh be? i i can't i can't i can't i can't i cannot believe that a team would do that and 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 honestly with as much as i like trevor lawrence as a prospect i really like him i think he's fantastic but even setting aside that as to what you see in the player if a franchise that needs a quarterback passes on what a lot of people are considering is one of the best over the past couple of years or you know setting aside personal opinion about him if they pass on him i mean how how you know, it's, it's not happening. There's no way they pass on him. It's just not happening. Everybody's mind would be blown. Can you imagine the – I wonder what the odds are for, like, betting on something like that. Like, hey, the Jags pass on a quarterback. I, I'd be curious to see what Vegas has the odds at for something like that. But, uh, it yeah, would, I doubt it happens. I, I would have to say that it would be reminiscent to the Andrew Luck number one overall. Mm. Odds. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see Vegas – they're, they're – there can't even be a bet. I I don't <laughs> believe Vegas would pay that out. Yeah, right. The only bet I could see would be is against him being the number one overall. Oh, yeah. No, that, and I wonder what the odds would be against him being the number one overall. I wonder what the payout would be if you bet, uh, bet the, you know, anybody but quarterback or anybody but Trevor, if that's a bet, either one of them. I'm the sure they would one. pay out. Yeah, I'm sure it would pay out insane. Uh, yeah. I'm sure it would pay out insane. Put a, but put it's been one. like that. It's been dollar down past couple, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I might as well. Um, but it's been like that for the past couple drafts. I mean, where usually by this time, you know, there's some you know smoke screens and hey, is it this guy? Is it that guy? But for the most part, we've known who number one was going to be. Number one is usually pretty, pretty straightforward, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, well, we so, knew but, yeah. it was going to be Kyler last year. Yeah. And that, or excuse me, well, year before. Sorry, we knew yeah. it was going to yeah. be Burrow this year, this past last year. year yeah. And now, granted, I and I think Burrow's a tremendous quarterback, and I've I've stuck by this because I don't always like to see a team go quarterback number one overall because typically there's a reason why the team is the number one overall pick unless they traded into it. Yeah. But I didn't think that they should have gone Burrow. I think they should have built a team. They should have gone Chase Young first because that mm. defense would have been able to handle it in the uh, AFC North at that point. Right. Um, and Burrow ended up getting hurt. Yeah. So 
if the Bengals had drafted Chase Young last year, they could have then gotten Trevor uh, Trevor Lawrence this year, maybe because they could have right, been the right. number one overall. Because they would have yeah. they would have pranced uh, Ryan Finley out there to get his ass handed to him last year. Yeah, yeah. But who knows? But uh, at, well, I mean, and aside from that, then the year before we had Baker Mayfield, and the talk was potentially Baker Mayfield or Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. then we had who was one overall in seventeen? Was that seventeen? Because that what? was the year with Daniel Jones. No, that was the year with uh, Mahomes. So was it uh seventeen? Man, jeez. Let's see. Um, I'm drawing a blank. That was the yeah, year with, me too. Because um, Trubisky went uh, third. Right. That's what I was trying to. Miles Garrett. Miles, that's right. Miles Garrett. Miles yeah. Garrett in in seventeen, and then sixteen was Goff. Goff. So yeah, the yeah. Uh, it it's been it's been pretty well known every year who was going to be one overall. I feel like the one that was like relatively late in deciding, you know, compared to the others, was that Baker one. I don't remember the Baker being a super, super lock until like right up until uh, right up close until the draft. Um, I know there was talks of it, but I don't remember him being a huge, like locked in for that position, at least not like this year with Trevor Lawrence. I don't remember. Right. Being that. No, um, no, it was nowhere near. There hasn't been a, a lock like this in, like I said, since Trevor since or since luck, uh, Andrew luck. luck. Yeah. Man. <clears throat> but the, the um, Baker year 18, it was, I I remember this one vividly because I remember even writing the little note for like in draft day, mm-hmm. and I was like Saquon no matter what because <laughs> I thought Saquon would have been a better fit for them to put a run game together and then draft a quarterback either beginning of the uh, of the second rounder or wait until uh, 2019 to draft a yeah. uh, quarterback and build a little bit more of a team around him. Yeah. And obviously Baker had his struggles early on, and and uh, they had a rough 2019. But they seem to be turning it around. Yeah, definitely do. Definitely look look to be getting. He looks to be getting better, especially. So. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, so moving past 49ers. Yeah. Uh, next topic that we were going to talk about was can Sam Darnold, speaking of quarterbacks drafted in 2018, yeah, can yeah. Sam Darnold be successful with his new team, the Carolina Panthers? Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely think so. I mean, we talked about it the last time I was on. I'm a big Sam Darnold fan. Um, and then you take him to an offense that they, they got some pieces there. McCaffrey only played three games. Here. They got DJ Moore. They reunite him with Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson had his best years with him in terms of touchdowns, not yardage, but in terms of touchdowns, he had his best uh, years with Sam Darnold throwing the ball to him. Um, and now there's a legitimate, uh, you know, I guess it depends on how you, there's a legitimate two, you know, there. If it's Robbie Anderson or if it's DJ Moore, however they uh, line it up, because I think either of them can play the number one wide receiver. And so there's a good number two there. There's a good running game. Um, you know, the offensive line is, you know, has some has some questions, but not horrible. It's not the worst offensive line ever. Um, and then on defense, they were pretty good last year. And honestly, the Panthers last year were a tough out. They lost five games by less than five points, right? I mean, they they really they lost to the Chiefs by two, lost to the Vikings by one. Um, and then they had two or three other games where they lose by five. You give them some of those games, they finish seven and nine, eight and eight, you know, and, and that's not a bad year considering you had Teddy Bridgewater who went 15 touchdowns and 11 interceptions and McCaffrey only played three games. Um, pretty impressive, uh, you know, to, to be at that place. And and like I said, they, they played a lot of teams tough. Um, so I think that Sam has everything that he needs there to succeed. But a lot of the things that he needs there to succeed um, – Some offensive line, maybe you know, and and really help them out there. But they have pieces there. That team's not shot to oblivion like he like it was with the you know when he was with the Jets. It's nowhere near that. There's some talent, and McCaffrey as a big option of the league. You know. Yep. 
Well, and when McCaffrey's healthy, he's one of the best running backs, absolutely. Absolutely. And now yeah. here's yeah. now here's one thing that I was doing some digging on outside of obviously McCaffrey. Their wide receivers do fall as Robbie Anderson, David Moore, and DJ Moore, or they're gonna be their three most productive. Yeah. Outside of that, so they have seven other wide receivers on the roster other than those three. Those seven other wide receivers on the roster have not put in more than three years of service in the NFL so far. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so a lot of inexperience on that team. But the question is, can those three, which will be their top three, unless they yeah, draft the main them, guys. Yeah. are those three capable of putting up 4,500 yards between the three of them? Because they're really going to need that almost between the three of them. Yeah, yeah, and they were 24th in scoring last year. That's, that's I feel like, it was a big part of their problem. 24th in scoring and still losing five games by less than five points. You know, that goes back to what I was saying about the team itself. But those three games, I mean, those three guys, excuse me, you know, definitely need to put up numbers. But then the other thing is, too, they can address it in the draft. Even if it doesn't go round one, even if they don't go round one wide receiver, they can go round two, and there's still some guys. Um, the, the top half of the wide receiver draft is heavy. It's stacked. and those guys are going to go early, but there's still some talent in the second round. And even in that you can get at wide receiver um, and put around him. And then the cool part about it is the guy that you draft in the second or third round can be your fourth wide receiver. Um, you know, he, he doesn't necessarily have to come in and play 95% of the snaps. You know, he can get in there and give you some solid snaps, you know, or, or maybe another guy they can go get is uh, another um multi-purpose back like a kylan hill type of guy out of mississippi state somebody that can kick uh, do punt returns do some kick returns get in you know get in with mccaffrey provide an extra being threat obviously mccaffrey's going to get and eat up a lot of the snaps as he should um but just getting him weapons is, is going to be a priority for them i think um weapons and protection of course but um yeah i think that those three guys i think that they can i think they can make it work especially with how big of a receiving threat mccaffrey is that mm -hmm. changes the whole dynamic of it because, you know, you can't just, you can't out as a defense, you can't just put, you know, man up on the wide receivers. You have to put somebody good on the cap and, and a linebacker is often a mismatch. The safety is often a mismatch. Um, it's kind of the same situation when you look at a, a big tight end, like a Gronk or, or, you know, in his prime, those type of guys create mismatches for the defense and, the, and it's an extra receiving threat. Uh, and McCaffrey's the same way, just a little bit of a different type of match that than Gronk is obviously. Well, and you bring up the tight end, which was going to be my next point. So perfect segue into it. So they have five tight ends on their roster currently mm. outside of Dan Arnold, who they just picked up from Arizona. <laughs> Dan Arnold's in his fifth year. None mm -hmm. of their other tight ends are, again, more than three years in the NFL. So again, we have a young group yeah. and Dan Arnold isn't exactly a massive receiving tight end. He's been known more as a blocking tight end. His yeah. biggest year was 31 receptions in the five-year career he's had, and that was in 2020. And that was with a obliterated wide receiver core with um, uh, the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. And so he was kind of forced into to that role, role yeah. because they had no other, t uh, no other receiving tight ends that were healthy for half the season. So, my opinion on this is they definitely are going to need wide receiver tight end help because if they do end up with, cause they're the number eight pick, if they do end up with a stud young wide receiver or a, I don't want to say Pitts because I don't believe Pitts is going to be there at eight, but if they end up with a Pitts esque type of tight end, that takes yeah. a lot of heat off the wide receivers as well, because now you have a multifunctional running back. You have three capable yeah. wide receivers, and then you'd have a capable receiving tight end, which is where even if they went out and signed a good receiving tight end, could pay off huge for them. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's not and, even... Then they can go and draft offensive line. Yeah, yeah, and that's not even mentioning some of the cuts. You know how it's going to be, you know how it's going to be right before the season starts. You got the preseason cuts, you know, week three, week four of the preseason, you know, depending on if we have one or not, you'll see some cuts, and there'll be some guys. I, oh, I feel yeah. like what they're looking for is more of a mid type of a receiver. Uh, the first guy that pops to my mind just, you know, 
familiarities is Adam Humphreys, what Adam Humphreys was for, for the Bucks in the years that he was there. He was a third down guy, you know, move the chains slot kind of guy. DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson can really stretch them. Um, I'm not sure David Moore is exactly that mid type of wide receiver. He's a bit of an interesting uh, fit with those guys because he's he's more of a bigger body. But I, I think if they can get like a mid type of a, of a receiver that's going to give them, you know, in that six to nine yard range on him, he's going to run those short, you know, outs. Mm-hmm. He's going to run those short slants, you know, that type of stuff that's going to move the chains. Then that offense is, is a good position um and you never know you know crazier things have happened it could be that Kyle Pitts falls to eight I don't think so either but you never know (laughs) you know and if he falls to eight man that would be a scary offense uh as long as Darnold can throw the football which you know I think he can well some of it's gonna boil some of it's gonna boil down to what the Falcons do with the number four overall pick which then leads us into the Next topic yeah. of conversation. Segway. We're staying staying in the AFC South or the excuse yeah. me, the NFC South here. Yeah. Where are the Falcons at with the number four overall? Should they trade out? Why or why not? I mean, listen, I think the first question that you have to ask, and I think it's been pretty clear, is that they believe in, in Matt in, in Matt Stafford. No. They believe in Matt Ryan, you know, and, and I think that's something that's been pretty clear. I think that's been made clear. Dirk Cutter, you know, very familiar with him. They've been around a long time. They believe in Matt Ryan, and I think that leads them to possibly trading out to add things because I don't think they think they're as far away as everybody else kind of feels like maybe they are. Um, but weapons-wise on that team, I mean, geez, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, it, it's not – have some weapons on offense they've spent some picks on the draft uh, some picks on the offensive line in the draft over the past couple years um haven't panned out to the best quite yet chris lindstrom and caleb McGee, two guys that popped to the top of my to the top of my head there but you know i think they believe in matt ryan i think they'll be looking at maybe trading out or trying to i just man i don't know it's it's a mixed message if you if you draft a, a backup quarterback there you know because yep. he's not going to play and if you think you're close then why, you know? And so to me, if I, if I'm the Falcons and I believe Ryan, which I, you know, I think he, he hasn't necessarily done anything to, to not, uh, to not warrant the belief in him other than, you know, he's, he's lost some close games. We were well, well aware of the Falcons struggles um, with, uh, with giving up leads, but he can still throw the ball. Um, So I think, I think you, I think you take what you can get there because, and this, what we were talking about earlier, because if, if Zach Wilson's gone, if, they're Mac Jones or Justin Fields, um, and Trevor's gone, of course, and either Mac Jones or, or, or Justin Fields are gone. Now there's one quarterback left that's in the top, you know, type of consideration with Trey Lance, right? And so who's going to pay a premium, or even Mac Jones if he's still there, um, but who's going to pay a premium to move up? There might be quite a few teams that are willing to pay that, and then you can move back and really fill a couple holes uh, on that Falcons team and, and then you're competing again. And I think that's kind of where they're going. I think that's where their mind's at, but who knows? Yeah. And if they're going to stay at number four and they're going to draft a quarterback, then to me, it would make sense if they went after a, a um, um, Trey Lance, because then they could let Lance develop for a season or potentially yeah. two, because let's face it in terms of contract salary cap wise, Matt Ryan's salary cap hit is just too big to absorb yeah. unless they're going to do it post June 1st next year, which then his salary cap hit bumps. And I'm going to say this down to like 21 million if it's post June 1st next year. But if they do that, they still have to pay his roster bonus after new league year starts next season, mm. which is still going to be, what 14 million or something like that for his roster yeah. bonus. So he's either way, he's carrying a large a lot amount. of money. Yeah. And the only way you're going to draft a quarterback at four with that type of commitment to their current quarterback is if it's somebody that they're anticipating learning for quote unquote developmental. Years. Yeah. But how do you sell that to your current starting quarterback? Yeah. I mean, so he, so here's here's some stats that I dug into for the Atlanta Falcons. Number one, Matt Ryan was sacked 41 times in in 2020. Mm-hmm. That tells you that they need offensive line help. Right. Who's the number one offensive lineman in this draft? Sewell. Sewell. Right. Okay. Sewell is a tackle. 
The Falcons offensive tackles, starting offensive tackles from 2020, allowed only seven of those 41 sacks last year. The interior line. Right. So Sewell's mm-hmm. not the guy. Right. So you're not wasting the number number four overall pick on a guard mm-hmm. that you can pick up in the second round. Right. Right. And that's where I'm going, well, shit, what do they do then? Mm-hmm. Kyle Pitts. Mm-hmm. So if they're staying at four, Gosh. I don't see Kyle Pitts staying on the board past number four. Now, if they trade back. I don't want to play that team. I don't want to play that team twice. <laughs> I don't want to play that stinking team twice, man. Can you imagine Kyle Pitts, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley? Oh, my. And Mike Davis running the rock. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> don't say that. Let's not. Let's pretend that that didn't just get said because then I got to play them twice. And I don't I, I'm looking at this let's say, going... Let's say they draft a backup quarterback. What I want. <laughs> I, I'm literally looking at this. As I was breaking all this down the last couple of days, I'm looking at this going, my God, they literally have just set themselves up to have a monstrous offensive multi-headed weapon here mm-hmm. that is going to be tough for any team to stop. Yeah, yeah. And... Yeah. I don't care who's throwing the ball at this point. If you have those three guys yeah. catching passes, yeah, you could have freaking Teddy Bridgewater throwing them the yeah. ball. Mm-hmm. And and the I, I I need to go back and look at the 2020 film of all the sacks, the 41 sacks Matt Ryan took, and look and see how many were coverage sacks, or how many were outside of the pocket where he just either held the ball too long or shifted out or how many yeah. of them were Todd Gurley not picking up blitzes. Yeah. And I, and I will say to the familiarity that I have with, with, with Dirk Cutter, you know, having coached Jameis for, and being a Bucks head coach for a few years, the offense that he runs oftentimes takes quite a while for the wide receiver route to develop. And that often can lead to the quarterback having to hold on to the ball for a long amount of time. And if you're holding on to the ball, obviously you're going to get sacked. And, you know, we're talking about Matt Ryan, probably one of the least mobile quarterbacks in the league. Uh, so that doesn't help much. I mean, Jameis is pretty mobile for for what he is. He, he's, he's more mobile than Matt Ryan, at least. And we saw him take a lot of sacks under Dirk Cutter, and it was a common theme. And every year we were like, you know, on the one hand, fans were always, because you see the sack numbers and you're instantly like offensive line. But once you dive into it a little more, you're like, wait a minute, these routes – are like 28 yard routes and we're supposed to have them develop in five seconds. You know, you're supposed, I mean, you have the offensive line can't just block for days and days, you know, <laughs> the other guys on the, the other side of the ball get paid too. Um, so be surprised if when you do dive into that and you see, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those are coverage sacks because it's, it's a common theme with their cutter and, and the offense that he runs. And that offense that he had with Matt Ryan under his most successful years brought it to it didn't work with Jameis Winston. Then he goes back, and I guarantee you he's doing the same thing. You know, they're just yeah. running the same thing because they're familiar with it, both of them. So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you looked at the film and saw a lot of coverage sacks. It would probably be the case. So, um, yeah, like I said, with them having spent uh, premier picks on, you know, Lindstrom and Caleb McGarry in the past couple of years, I don't know that, I like, you know, agreeing with what you're saying, I don't know that I can see them going offensive line, um, which, like you said, starts to point towards – he who we shall not speak of from before. <laughs> he whose because name shall not be mentioned. Yeah, 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 man, come on, man. Don't do that. Can you imagine the offenses in the <laughs> NFC South, man? Darnold with DJ and Robbie Anderson, uh, McCaffrey, and then the Falcons with that offense. And the Saints are still nothing to be, you know, Kamara and Michael Thomas alone make that offense pretty hard to stop. So that, you, that would you be have tough. You have two of your divisional opponents that are picking in the top eight. Yeah. And yeah. they could potentially end up with anybody from Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, or <laughs> Smith. Yeah. And yeah. I guarantee you, one of those two teams will probably end up with one of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. So it's It'll just a fun. matter of which one it's and gonna... which quarterback's going <laughs> to be throwing to him. We're going to need Sue and JPV and Shaq Barrett to those guys and then the, the, the edge rusher that I assume that we're going to take at 32 we're going to need them to get there faster <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. man this draft is going to be it's going to be crazy I, yeah. I you know I was saying 
the 2020 draft class could potentially go down in NFL history as one of the best ever. An all-timer, you think so? When you look at, you know, the quarterbacks alone, so we have, you know, obviously Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. uh, If Tua ends up panning out, um, obviously Jalen Hurts has already started and he's been electric. Uh, Jordan Love steps into Aaron Rodgers' um, um, heir apparent. Um, But then if you look at the running backs as well tied into it, Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and I know there's a couple more, but then you move over to the electric wide receiver class in that draft class. We haven't even touched the defensive side of the ball yet. Mm -hmm. And we have Justin Jefferson, Jalen Rager with a lot of potential, Brandon Ayuk, uh, LaVisca Chenault, um, Denzel Mims, who was highly touted coming out of college. Yeah, So we literally could be looking at at least the best offensive NFL Mm -hmm. draft class in NFL history. And now we're looking forward at the 2021 class. Yeah. And they're about to potentially put them to shame. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unreal. I mean, when you look at, and I said this, you know, what, a couple months ago we were having this conversation. I didn't believe that there would be five quarterbacks drafted in the first round because we hear it every year. We hear, you know, a, B, C, D, and E are all first-round graded quarterbacks. They could go anywhere. They could blah, 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 blah. And we see two or three go, maybe a fourth later in the first. Yeah. We're looking at five in the top ten. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, okay, I'm about to eat my own words because I didn't believe it was going to happen. And we are a week and a half from it being reality. Yeah. It's it's yeah. just insane. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be wild. It always happens, like you said, it always happens like this because of the overdraft backs we see here. This talking about what we talked about earlier and said that in February some guys you know, you never heard of the you know guy X Y and Z and all of a sudden he's uh, you know top three on on Mel Kiper's big board and NFL teams are drooling over him and oh my gosh his strength his perfect you know all of these things and then we have this overdraft. And, it, you know, it happens every year. Um, I don't and specifically in terms of the quarterbacks, I don't see this class being worthy outside of Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, like I said, Justin Fields. Um, but to me, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, uh, Trey Lance is really good, too, but he's not I don't because I, I do think he's good, but I don't think he's there yet. I think he, he does need some development. Um, definitely. So he's going to be a year or two. But those three guys, to me you know, rounding out the five, it's not a super strong quarterback class, in my opinion. Um, but it, it happens every year with with everybody getting excited about a quarterback. And it goes back to what you were saying, too, with these teams drafting like Joe Burrow, when you when you mentioned the Bengals taking him and how they should have built a team first. I agree with you. Immediately happens is that these GMs and these head coaches, they don't know how much time they have. And so they have to go with the quote unquote sure thing, because if Joe Burrow hits, he literally buys that front office and that staff like three or four years just because that one pick hits. And if you go with the Chase Young and then you go two until the next year, yeah, you get the pick. But then what if that pick doesn't hit? Now you're gone. And that's two years, you know, and it's like the quarterbacks, I feel like buy these because the head coaches can sell the front office and the ownership on, hey, I drafted this quarterback, but he wasn't quite ready. I'm going to need two years, three years with him getting worked into a pro offense, he can sell their ownership on that. And that's why I think it happens so often that teams overdraft quarterbacks because they need a they need a get out of jail free card. And and if they get a you know a guy like Burrow and say, hey, you saw how well he played a bad team about three years and I can really show you how good he's gonna be. And and so that's why I think it kind of happens. But this year, of course, like you said, it ends where sudden Mac Jones is being talked about at three. Two months ago, that was not a thing, you know? <laughs> and now all of a sudden we're like, is Mac Jones going to go at three? Um, and it somehow seems more likely than he'll, that he'll go at three than Justin Fields. Yep. So. Well, and now but, they're uh, even talking yeah, about, <clears throat> there's like two other quarterbacks out there 
that they're saying could go late first Kyle Trask or not. Um, yeah, no Trask. Um, the hurricanes. Florida, yeah. And then I think the, he's a Gator. No, Trask Gator, was a Gator, yeah. right? Gator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, um, God, there was one other kid that they were talking about. I've heard his ta- name. Are they What's talking it? about Mond? Kel- yeah. Kellen or Mond. No? Is it? Yeah, they were saying that potentially he could go late in the first as well. And I'm just like, why? Why? Yeah. You can pick him up in the third. You don't yeah. have to pick him up in the first. Yeah. Just like Trask, you don't have to pick him up in the first. Because if he didn't no. make it through the first round, or excuse me, if he made it through the first round, he's going to make it through the second round too. Through the second round, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah, you know, now – those top five guys will not make it past the second round. No, no. But those tier two guys, Trask and Mond and whoever else is up there for ranking in that tier two mark, they'll make it to the third round. There's no yeah. teams that are probably going to grab a quarterback in the second round unless it's a Justin Fields that falls or a Trey Lance that falls or Mac Jones that falls those guys will go in the second round if they don't get scooped up in the first. So question for you then, I'll, I'll pose this to you. What do you think, if you had to say today, what do you think is the most likely of the five to fall? Mac Jones. Yeah, I think so too. And, and mostly because he really only has the 49ers that are really envious, we'll call it. But also he's the one who shot up the boards after the college season was over. Yeah, Everybody yeah. else was already in talks of being in the top four. Mac right. Jones all of a sudden came up because of the national championship game. And that's really what he, and I'm not saying he had a bad season, but he wasn't even through December 31st. He was not really in the conversation for being a first round quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. And then national championship game mid-January rolls around and he has a great game and all of a sudden bells are ringing and (laughs) people are tearing down statues and all of a sudden going, oh my God, Mac Jones is going to be a first round quarterback. He needs to go second or third overall. He's better than Zach Wilson. What? Yeah. Yeah. And now, like I said, and now we're talking about him at three. It's mind boggling to me that it's even in the conversation. Um, but so, like you said, I don't think if anybody slides, it's Mac. Yeah. I'm surprised if he slides out of the first round though. I don't believe he will either. Yeah. Um, I, I, I covered this last season about quarterback saturation point. I'm a big Dave Damashek fan. Mm, I and like Damashek. I had a conversation with Damashek, uh, early in this past season, we were discussing, quarterback saturation point and with how many quarterbacks are on the open market or changing teams um how many capable starters we'll call it Mm -hmm. i wouldn't say quality starters we'll say capable starters (laughs) and i rattled off guys that were potential trade material or upcoming free agents was like 29 quarterbacks and that's not counting the starting quarterbacks that were (laughs) solid fixed in their position. Right. And that is where the quarterback saturation point is when there's so many that you're either going to have an abundance of veterans get cut or you're going to see the draft stock of quarterbacks beyond one and two fall drastically. Yeah. Well, we obviously are not seeing draft draft stock fall. <laughs> so that tells me quarterbacks that are journeymen are going to get bumped to practice squad or just outright cut. Yeah. Washington went and picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick, the ongoing joke is he's played for all 32 teams in the NFL. Yeah. If Washington drafts a quarterback in the first round, what does Ryan Fitzpatrick think? Yeah. If Chicago goes out and drafts a quarterback in the first round, what does Andy Dalton think? Those two guys were brought in under the impression 
that they were going to be the starter. Significant minutes, yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden they get bumped and they're disgruntled and they want out and by midseason potentially get released. I don't think Ryan Fitzpatrick would because Ryan Fitzpatrick's just a he's a stand up guy. He is he is a really good human being. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> based on all the shit that I've seen him go through uh, go through throughout his career. I don't see him putting his foot down and being disgruntled. I want to be cut. I want to be traded, blah, 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 blah. I could see him if a Trey Lance or Justin Fields got drafted or even Mac Jones drafted by Washington, I could see him being, like he did with Tua, um, very instrumental in their growth this season. But he mm -hmm. ain't coming back next year. Yeah. So yeah. that quarterback saturation point, I think we've reached it. And instead of quarterback stock falling in the draft, everybody's looking for the BBD, the bigger, better deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where we're at right now. Yeah. Because the Jaguars had Gardner Minshew. He was the, the next big thing after the 29 <laughs> season or 2019 season. Yeah. And this year he couldn't string wins together. He also <laughs> got hurt and they ended up with the number one overall pick. Now, let me ask you this. If Jacksonville had not secured the number one overall pick and they weren't in the Trevor Lawrence lottery, would they draft a quarterback? I would hope. I mean, I, I, I you know, Minshew's fun and everything and I, his persona and everything, it's a blast. But um, outside of that, I mean, I didn't see even when it was, you know, Minshew mania, he was fun, tough, you know, running around, making plays. You know, he had a couple clutch moments. I didn't see a franchise guy, you know, and that's the thing is when, when you're looking at quarterbacks around the NFL, you have to analyze whether they're franchise guys or not. And there's not a lot. You, you, it's literally a swing and miss on it. Take a chance on this guy. Hope he's a franchise guy. If he is, I got a 10 year job. If he's not, I'm going to get fired in three. Uh, um, so I would hope if, if that had happened, how you're saying, I, you know, and, and, and they didn't lock up Trevor Lawrence, I would hope they'd be looking at quarterback. Um, you know, it was, I think you have to look at where Jacksonville was for, for a couple years. They were ranking dead last, I believe, in um, um, tickets sold. They weren't they weren't getting anybody in the stadium. And even still, they're struggling to get people in the stadium. But the Minshew thing, the Minshew craze and all of that, it got some excitement going. And people were watching the Jaguars. Even on the national level, uh, there were people that were excited for the Jaguars and just, you know, persona and the attitude and all that. But now that that's kind of faded, the mad, you know, it's you know the magic of that whole uh, thing has kind of faded. Now, now you got to get back to okay. Let's see if we can find a guy. And so I would have hoped that they realized that and 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 gone quarterback regardless. Even if they had ended up at number three, I think that they would have had to have gone quarterback. I would have I would have assumed so. Yeah. <clears throat> but at the same time, how much does that change Gardner Minshew's game if he has a Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase to throw to? Because let's face it. They've been weapon stricken. Yeah. You know, um, DJ Chark last year was in and out. LaVisca yeah. Chenault struggled most of the season. Their ground game was good. James Robinson came in as an undrafted free agent rookie and he was electric. Yeah. Um, but as far as their receivers went, their guys struggled big time. Keaton Not a whole Cole lot. had yeah. had a number of, of really good plays and he kind of really stepped in with um, DJ Chark being injured and struggling some, some, and then LaVisca Chenault really struggling. Cole came in and he had a really good season actually, Yeah. but again, no consistency. The other yeah. thing was their offensive line allowed a lot of sacks as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Minshew's pretty mobile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he ended up hurt for a number of games as well. Right. And so what did he miss? Five games, six games this year? Something like that. Yeah. He, he missed a good chunk. He missed and a that, good chunk of games. And that can hurt, especially a young guy. Yeah. Because, let's face it, Minshew wasn't drafted with the pedigree of he's going to be the franchise guy. He was no, a sixth-round draft pick. And he really only came in because Nick Foles got hurt. And so Minshew never really developed with the first team. And then second year, he got extremely limited because he spent all, the, all of his rookie offseason – uh, or uh, training camp and stuff leading up to his rookie year being the second team, third team quarterback. 
Yeah. Foles was running the first team. Yeah. Foles gets injured to start the season. Minshew comes in with zero experience with those guys. <laughs> yeah. And then his second season was COVID. He had yeah. zero off season with his team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now you got a quarterback who's played two full seasons as a starting quarterback. Well, a, a season and a half because of injury, but a second, uh, two seasons in the NFL and he has never had an off season with his first team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's tough for him too, because not only, you know, do you take that into consideration, but you also take the fact that when you're looking at, when you're looking at a guy like Minshew, like you said, he wasn't drafted. He was drafted to be a backup. He wasn't drafted to come in and, and fill those shoes. And he, when, when Foles goes down, he comes in and he provides a spark. But what we usually see with that type of situation is backups come in, they play pretty well for a couple games and then people get film on them and then, keep on them and understand what it is that they do and what it is because it was the same thing that happened in the with the Bucks against uh the football team we've talked about that but that was the toughest game the Bucks had in the playoffs tougher than the Super Bowl tougher than the NFC championship it was the toughest game they had because there was no tape on Heineke and that's the same thing that happened with Minshew there was no tape and then these teams got tape and then add in the fact that you say like you say he didn't get two off seasons he didn't have with the first team so it was really honestly poor uh for Minshew but even with what we did have I didn't see him as a franchise guy I, you know he's yeah. Fitzpatrick-esque you know you, you get a couple good games solid backup gonna be that for a couple years gonna be like hey you know when you have a team that has a good backup quarterback uh, like that it's kind of nice because you know hey if my guy goes down for three or four games hey, I can go two and two and still be in the playoff picture not a lot of teams have that situation so and that's, I think, the situation Jacksonville is going to be in. So it's a good situation to be in, but I don't think Minshew was ever going to be that other than just the excitement and the hype and, you know, the persona. Well, and regardless what happens with him going forward, he got a platform. That's for damn yeah, sure. He did. He absolutely He became did. an overnight <laughs> sensation, and now he has a platform to do whatever the hell he mm-hmm. wants for his future. He, he did an excellent <laughs> job taking advantage of his opportunity, not just in a football sense, right? Because we know that after these guys retire from football, there's still a lot of life going on, and a lot of guys are not prepared for after football. And Minshew has put himself just with the persona and the exciting, and the you know he has put himself in a good situation. Um, he's going to be a you know if he wants to be, he could be in a million commercials. You know how many people are going to want to have that? You know the joke, the funny, the persona, the the charisma. Everybody's going to want to have that. So. Yep. Um, he put himself in a good situation on and off the field, definitely. So, and, and for a six round draft pick, you can't ask for, for, for much more. Um, you know, a lot of those guys, barely, you know, in their second year. And, and we're talking about a guy that has played significant football for his draft positioning and anyways. Yep. For a guy who did the whole hair and mustache thing as a joke in college, <laughs> yeah. because of, it was yeah. a bet, I believe I heard. I think it was a bet. Yeah. That's what and I did. Then, and then turned that into yeah. a an absolute brilliant marketing strategy when yeah. he got to the pros. Good on him. Yeah, absolutely. So, Props all to right. him. Before I let you go, we're we're, we're going to talk a little bit a little bit of NBA. Yeah. Um, I don't often get off platform, but I know we've had this conversation a little bit before. Yeah. You're a big Lakers guy, and. I know you have your podcast dropping, uh, dropping, dropping a dime or dropping dimes, dropping a dime, dropping a dime. Okay. Yeah. And I know you guys talk a lot of Lakers on there. Yeah. So AD rumored. To yeah. Be back end of next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe it was last the report I saw. It was uh two weeks for him and that was probably five or six days ago. And then uh, LeBron, I think three ish, like right after him. So, Lakers have slid down to what six seed right right now? I believe so. I believe that's that's around right. I haven't checked the standings uh, recently, but I believe that's about right. Definitely have had a little bit of a slide um, for for them, but you know, but, not not the worst. But they're still because it's seven through ten in the playoff in the play, right? Mm-hmm. So, and they're still five games up over the ten, I believe. And they're sitting. They're actually sitting at five right now. Just double checked. Oh, they're sitting at fifth right now. Fifth, yes, sir. Okay, so they they're five spots above, but I believe they're five games up over the number ten. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. 
Might even be six or seven, yeah. So it sounds like they're at least going to be in the play-in. And it sounds like... Yeah, should be in the play-in easily, yeah. And and it sounds like LeBron is going to be back before the playoffs. Yeah. So the prediction of the most dangerous, yeah. lowest seed <laughs> yeah. in NBA history could happen. Alive and well. Alive and well, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, who, who, who wants to play that as a six seed? Who wants to play that as a five seed? Uh, that's a tough matchup for whoever gets that. And so, and then, you know, and I, I think, you know, I, this is what we had talked about. It, this is a type of situation to feel like, as, and I don't feel... Uh, afraid because oh they have to travel and they're gonna have to play and somebody's out they've, they've both been doing this forever you know a- ad and lebron have been do- it's not a thing for them you know um when you're talking about veteran players oftentimes the home court advantage situation goes away to the extent of when you're talking about a young team like a younger team that gets home significant advantage an older team that has to play on the road it's not a huge deal especially for guys like like especially like lebron you know um and the rest of the team around them, you know, you know, Dennis Schroeder even uh, it has shown veteran presence. Andre Drummond, you know, the, these guys are not they're, they're season bets. And so it's not necessarily a, a big concern of mine. And yeah, like I said, man, that's the scariest. Uh, you know, I was talking about on the podcast the other day, man, scariest uh, six, five seed in, in NBA history without a shadow of a doubt, I think. So, um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, and then with with Denver, losing Jamal Murray that's just huge for them and right now they're sitting at four and if they have to play the Lakers in, in the four or five matchup and you know that's that's tough that is just brutal for them being Jamal Murray I really like Jamal Murray too so it sucks to see that but yeah yeah I was watching that game when that happened yeah. and when he drove in and just the way he collapsed I looked at it and and I was actually in bed watching it and I kind of looked at my wife and I was like, oh, and she looks up and she was just like, oh, my God, what happened to him? And I was like, well, nobody touched him. You could see that on the on the yeah. initial drive. Nobody touched him. Yeah. And was, then they showed the replay from underneath the hoop. And I was like, oh, yeah. boy. And I almost thought yeah, hyperextension I said the same thing. first. I yeah. almost thought hyperextension at first. And I was like, I'm hoping that's all it is. Yeah. Because that's hyperextended knee is two to three weeks and he's back right acl he's out potentially into next season yeah and and you were on to something definitely with seeing the hyper extension oftentimes with those type of injuries what we see is a hyper extension that ends up popping the acl yep uh, the beer hyper extension that ends up popping the acl too so it was definitely when i saw the play it, it was it was the same thing i saw him go down and instantly into my head i didn't want to say it out loud i really liked him more Murray. i didn't want to say it out loud and i was just like oh in my head i'm like it's an acl I just know it. Like, you just see it, you know. It's just, like you said, no contact, common, you know, with ACL. Most of the time, they're non-contact. Um, yep. And just the rehab that goes into it is obviously extensive. And it's well known. Everybody said, you know, everybody knows, uh, even outside of, of knowing medicine in general. But sports medicine, everybody knows ACL nine months. You know, everybody's just, um, you know, very acutely aware of that. So, um, yeah, tough for them. Uh yeah, tough for them. Yeah, that's a can't tough say much about. That's a team, and that seems a team. That's the thing with with Denver. They're a fun team to watch. I really like Jokic, uh, Murray. They're an old school basketball team. You know, you could just see they're out there just doing it. You know, right? <laughs> you know, and that's why it's exciting for me. I mean, I'm a Lakers fan. We have a great team with LeBron James, obviously, but <clears throat> the modern NBA with you know all of the stars together, and and you know like how we see with with the Nets. Ah, it's it's a bit tiresome, uh, you know, watch that. So I like watching teams that do it right. Denver's one of them. Portland's another one that you just see those guys, their, their stars play together for a long time. They stay there. They're not worried about the market. They're not trying to get the that's ever played basketball and is really good at it on the same team. So um, it's, it's, it's fun to watch, you know, to, to see that. So it was it was painful to see Murray go down because, you know, that with with him goes most of their hopes. Um just with the way that the that the format is set up, um, you know, bigs can't dominate like they used to. Um, they can't. You and even as good as Jokic is, because he's not just a big. I mean, he can play point guard, um, point forward, you know, but he can't do it alone, especially not in the right. West. So it's it's going to be tough for them. It's going to take bull bull. <laughs> it's going to take bull. 
Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> it's time to bring Go them up. Bring out the, the secret point. weapon. Yeah, <laughs> bring out the secret weapon. There was a game a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. He went off. I don't know if you saw it, but it was like a it was a thrash. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It was like 15 points, but he was like stepping up at the elbow, crossing left, and then taking a jump shot. And I'm like, he had that leg. step back three pointer too. He crossed yeah. over and yeah. had the step back three. Yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, oh boy. right, yeah. Oh man, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And right, so yeah, because it's it's funny watching the NBA players nowadays because. Back when I was younger, watching the NBA, it wasn't common for a six foot ten guy, a six foot eleven, seven footer to step back and cast a three. You now have yeah, guys yeah. like yeah. Carl Anthony Towns doing it regularly. Anthony Davis does it regularly. Jokic does it regularly. These big guys casting threes. Yeah, so I'm six nine, and I remember when I was in college. Wait, you're six nine, bro? Yeah. And I, when I was in Dude, college, I had no idea. Sorry, it's completely uh, <laughs> six nine. I, I don't know. It blows my mind. Holy cow, six nine. Anyway, start no, <laughs> all, all good, man. Uh, <laughs> when I was in college, because when I was in high school, I was a center. Yeah. I went to a small school. Um, there, the, the tallest guy I ever played against. There was one guy that I played against that was like six eight. He was a big behemoth of a guy, mm -hmm. not mobile at all, so I could run circles around him because I was quick. Mm -hmm. Um. But I was skinny as shit, dude. I was 195 or 190, 195 pounds at 6'8 oh, yeah. when I graduated high school. Yeah. And I never once attempted a three-pointer in my entire high school career. Not once. Yeah. I never stepped out behind three-point because I didn't have to because I could just blow guys down low yeah. and and score. It was it, yeah. There was no problems with that at all. Mm -hmm. When I got to college because I was skinny – and I was quick. I, I ran like a four five forty because I was oh, wow, a full okay. wide receiver. And so when I got to college and I was skinny, I wasn't going to handle it down on the post. One of the guys, the first college I went to was Valley City State University. It was a, a small div Division three college, and there was a six foot ten guy on the team. His name was Big Ed, and he was your traditional six foot ten guy's pipes were you know forty inches around. Mm -hmm. um, but man, I posted him up and I pushed back into him and I looked at coach. I was like, nope, ain't happening. Nope, I can't, I can't push guys around like that. He's not you moving, know? coach. No. And I was just, and, and cause I was used to being a, a, a center that yeah. I was stronger than everybody that I played against. Bigger than everybody. Even I yeah. Was skinny. Right, right. And yeah, you get to college, whole different story. And so yeah. it was like, we were doing drills and stuff. And my coach looks at me, he's just like, he goes, we're going to move you out to shooting guard. It's quite a position change there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh. And so yeah. I, later that day, I ended up dislocating my shoulder and screwing up my, oh, my entire next several years. Right. Um, but the following the following year, when I was doing off-season workouts and stuff, we were playing, we were doing open gym with the basketball team. And... <laughs> It was funny because Big Ed was there again, yeah. and I was literally the next biggest guy on the team. Yeah, and so Ed's guarding me because they you got to separate Ed, yeah. the two big guys. But I was right. out playing shooting guard, and I'm just blowing past this guy because he's <laughs> Big Ed. Yeah, right, right. And but man, I tell you what, down low he would just push me. Dominate, right down. yeah. That was yeah. brutal. Oh yeah. my god, we had another guy. His name was Otis. He was six foot eight, Otis. but he was like big bodied boy and so when right. when him and i would be on the same team we'd put him on the center because i couldn't guard big guys yeah 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 oh man that and that and, and that dynamic of the step back and and you know how the bigs have transformed as much like which is kind of what we do a lot in our podcast if you i don't know if you know people watching have heard it but what we do a lot is we'll compare the two we cover nfl and nba so we'll compare the two and what we've talked about before is comparing the 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 evolution of the modern with the evolution of the center, right? I mean, very much the same thing where now it's almost required as you're being drafted out of college, NBA teams are looking at you and they're saying, hey, I need you to be able to stretch the floor. I need you to be able to hit a three in the corner. I, I You can't just post up. You can't just, hey, right. get down on the block, back and down and dunk. That's not how that goes anymore. You have to be able to stretch the floor. And 
Same thing with t- tight ends. Back in the day, it was, hey, go block. That's all I need you to do. You're an extra blocker. You don't catch the ball. And now you're looking for O.J. Howard, like Kyle Pitts, like guys where they're just athletic freaks that can block, catch, run. Uh, they can do everything, you know, and that's just – it's not necessarily a – uh, it's not necessarily a bonus if you can catch. It's a requirement now as a tight end. You got to be able to catch the ball and move with the ball. You know, when OJ was a big thing, his 40 time was incredible. He could block, he could catch, he could, and he's a mismatch for anybody. Yep. So that that's kind of the, but anyways, that's just a, a note on, you know, kind of what we like to do in the podcast, just kind of comp- those two things and, and, you know, bring the two sports together because it's, it's kind of fun to do. We watch both of them, so, you know. Awesome. Well, definitely anybody that's watching, go check out Dropping a Dimes podcast. Um, Mark Magani's co-host. And uh, how often do you post? We, your... Yeah, we do two a week. We'll do one NBA and one NFL per week. Um, we fell off a little bit last week. We haven't done the NFL one, but we just recorded, posted an NFL one yesterday um, where we talked about um, – Kevin James playing Sean Payton was something that we had a lot of fun with. <laughs> uh, we had a fun time talking about that. And then we talked about uh, a list that NFL.com posted. It's a couple of players that have something to prove. And then we talked about Sam Darnold actually pretty extensively and how that fit works out in, in, uh, in the Panthers new system. Before I let you go, did you see the back and forth between the saints and the, and the Falcons Twitter accounts? I, the... n- briefly, but no, I, so all of it, but briefly, I heard about it. So when that was announced, yeah, uh, the um, uh, Kevin James playing Sean Payton, the Atlanta Falcons Twitter account took Sean Payton's face and put it on Paul Blart's movie poster, <laughs> and so it was Paul Blart, you know, mall cop, yeah. with Sean Payton's face, yeah, and then um. New Orleans Twitter account responded by taking Sean Payton's face and putting it on the King of Queens um, um, advertisement poster. Yeah. And changed it from the King of Queens to the the Kings of beating Atlanta. (laughs) (laughs) I tell you what, man, NFL social media, the past couple of years, watching the teams change their dynamics and all the jokes. It's pretty cool. I mean, I've really enjoyed it. You know, if you enjoy Twitter, especially, I, I think it's, for for sports but man watching all the teams i don't know if you saw there was the when the panthers signed dan arnold and then the next day or a day or two later they signed sam darnold i think it was the cardinals twitter account but they showed the two signings next to each other and it's dan arnold sam darnold and then it was like what kind of nefarious plans do the <laughs> do they have <laughs> just stupid stuff that, i mean they're doing a great job you know these te- these uh these team pages are doing a great oh, job managing man. those and i always get to keep watching them go back and forth that, um, that would be fun to be a social media account runner yeah. for a big company or a or a, a team like that and yeah. just roasting people. Just Yeah, because they just rip people, and it's great. Oh, yeah. it, it's great. It's great to watch because most of the people that come at them, there was actually a tweet today on the, on the Bucks Twitter that was – so the Buccaneers posted something about we don't know which one we – and it was a picture of Mike Allstott with his ring, and then the other one was Tom Brady or something like that. Not Mike call study excuse me Derek Brooks um and then somebody commented and was like ha 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 you guys only have one ring and then somebody retweeted and was like who's gonna tell because the Bucks have two rings you know <laughs> Twitter is the best for that kind of stuff you always catch people <laughs> tweeting stuff that you know and then they get killed for it and it's just great <laughs> That's awesome yeah. it's awesome it is all right Mark well I thank you very much for joining me this week sir yeah it was a so, blast um man. Guys, make sure you go check it out. The co-host of the Dropping a Dime podcast, yeah. Mr. Mark Magana. Yeah, sure. and we also we also actually I'll, I'll drop this note today. I figured out how to get voice bells into the podcast, so it's kind of cool because we're gonna have a call in feature where you can call in, leave a message, question, comment, concerned about either one. So, anyways, looking forward to that. Check it out, guys. Dropping a Dime podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts available: Spotify, Apple Music, you know, all of that is there. So. Yeah. Awesome. Anyways, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. We'll talk to you Take later. it easy, brother. All right, brother. See ya. Mark Magani, ladies and gentlemen. That was a fun, fun interview. He's always fun to have on. Okay. So we ran a little over. And again, my fault. <clears throat> I sometimes get a little long-winded with these guys. 
because I enjoy talking sports with these guys. And that's what I love to do. Um, let me move something here real quick so that we can get to our rip tonight. Keep my microphone up close to me because I like this a lot better. This is way better. So now I just got to have all the cords out of my way. So tonight, um, I am testing out the new setup for braking and I'm going to move this hang on one second guys because I want to have my microphone closer hopefully by next week I'm going to have a mic stand that's going to be up closer to me as well so I don't have to screw around with this come on perfect alright that's better <clears throat> this is how make sure I got this right this is how the brake setup is going to be moving forward and then on the left side of the screen will be any lists for who has what team in the brake so that everything is all dialed in everything's in front of us And we can run the randoms, all that fun stuff. All right. So, our rip, and you guys can see, that's all the stuff we're ripping tomorrow night. We've got our two boxes of select. We've got our prism basketball. We've got our contenders optic football and our tribute baseball. That's all of our rips for tomorrow night. Our breaks, I should say. And tonight, we're going to rip a box of the new Sage 2021 Premier Draft Low Series football. This just came out. This is not the High Series. And I don't believe Trevor Lawrence is in Low Series. I believe he's in High Series. But Justin Fields is in Low Series. As you can see, he's on the box. And thank you all for not only supporting the show and watching the show, but also thank you to everybody who's in the breaks so far. Um, obviously, this is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to make this a big ongoing thing every week. And our breaks for next Wednesday will be listed Thursday sometime throughout the day. So... But this is going to be our setup for breaks. I might adjust the camera angle a little bit, obviously, so we have a little more room because I'm a fan of having more room on the break table. I'm not sure I like this close-up space because I'm afraid the cards could potentially end up off camera. And that is my big no-no is cards never leave the camera. So this is going to be my test run to see if we have enough space. You guys tell me if anything ever leaves the camera. Obviously, it might for a brief, very brief second like it just did. But if anything ever is out of camera frame to a point that it's a bad look. So this, again, is kind of our trial run. 2021 Premier Draft Low Number. Low series, sorry. 16 autographs per box. And yes, Trey Lance is as well. All right, starting it off. So this is what the base looked like. I got to get used to dropping this down because my last camera was up here. Uh, so Nico Collins, uh, Elijah Griffin. Here is the next level insert. Daz Newsom, and our first auto is a next level auto red of Rashad Weaver. Uh, Smith Marset, and that's a variant. That's actually a parallel. 
Andre Cisco and Dalen Hayes base rookies. So now that we've taken a look at that, I'm going to fly through this for the most part. I'm going to have to adjust the camera up top. I can see that as well when I'm leaning forward. Speaking of, there's my North Dakota State Bison, Trey Lance. Bowman. D Diedrich Mills and Otto of J. Ron, Joe, excuse me, J. Ron, Joe Tyron. Tryon. Tryon. T-R-Y-O-N. Tryon. Sage Surratt. Tutu Atwater. And Eskridge. Tyron. Now we just need a Trey Lance auto. We get the next level Rashad Bateman. Marlon character. And an art gallery of Mac Jones. That's the first art gallery I've seen. I watched a couple other boxes of this get ripped. And our auto for this pack, Sean Bayer, tight end. Yep, Tyron was a, or Tryon, yeah, was a UW guy. I thought that was what the jersey looked like. At well, Jonathan Cooper, and it looks like we hit a one of one. Jonathan Cooper, one of one, hand numbered. Defensive end for, looks like Ohio State. Very cool. One of one auto, Jonathan Cooper. Very cool. I watched several boxes of this get ripped, and there was no numbered at all in there, so that's pretty dang awesome to hit a one of one. Bateman, Felton, Stoner, Aaron McAllister, rookie auto. Well, they're all rookies. I don't even have to say that. Kyle Pitts, next level. And there we go. Peak performance, Trey Lance. It's got that foil look to it. That is a big boom for me. <clears throat> Greg McRae, Mark Webb, and Quinn Norden. It's got the red border. Yeah, the chrome does look nice. So, Weaver, Brevin Jordan, next level. Andre Cisco, red border auto. Dalen Hayes, J.C. Horn, he's going to be a first-rounder. Kylan Hill. <clears throat> Rondale Moore, Riley Cooper. Kyle Trask, we were talking about him earlier tonight. And Sam Ellinger, peak performance autograph, numbered out of 25. Six of 25. So we got a one of one. And a numbered out of 25 tonight. Peak performance. Auto. Tyson Campbell. Holland. Justin Fields. And another art gallery of Mac Jones. D'Angelo Amos. Kyle Pitts next level. Ambry Thomas, cornerback, Otto. McGrone, Abrams Jr., and Sage Surratt, next level. 
<clears throat> Rousseau, Ramsey, Felton, next level, Otto, Brett Heggie, offensive lineman. Auto, Brandon Stevens, next level auto. Not too shabby, on card autos. I like it, I like it. Daz Newsome, next level. There's a Trey Lance, next level. So I got three Trey Lance in this box. Dalen Hayes, defensive end. Looks like for Notre Dame. Yep. Red border auto. Kenneth Gainwell, next level. And a Diedrich Mills, peak performance. And all those nice chrome. Kyle Trask, next level. Peyton Ramsey, we get another quarterback auto. Dalen Hayes, my Davis, Jamie Newman, next level. Gainwell Weaver, Patrick Ramsey, auto. Ernest Brown. Defensive end. Kylan Hill, Embry Thomas, Dalen Hayes. Last pack containing our last auto. Osai, Camp. We get a Brevin Jordan next level. Red border auto of Donovan Steiner. Safety, Florida Gators. Cyrus Mitchell. So that was one box of Sage Premier Draft Low Series highlighted by a Sam Ellinger Peak Performance Auto numbered 6 of 25 and Jonathan Cooper, one of one auto. Now, just a heads up, these are not all on card. As you see, this is actually a sticker. And as you can tell, they're not all straight. So I didn't want to fool anybody. The next level auto, I mentioned it, was on card. I didn't notice any others that were on card other than the next levels. The base all appear to be stickers. Just to make sure that I'm not misleading anybody. The peak performance also was a sticker. It's the same style sticker. So next level autos appear to be all on card though. Okay. so. Let's give some shit away. Um, I'm gonna sleeve all these first. So give me just a moment.
No, David, I, I wouldn't say it's bad for Sage at all. Um, it's it's a decent product. I don't... I, and this is not a knock on Sage at all, but I didn't have extremely high expectations coming into ripping this box. <clears throat> um, I've ripped Sage in the past, and um, I, I, it's okay. I'm not a big... I know, I know a lot of guys on Twitter that live and die Sage, and that's fantastic, but those are also guys who are hardcore collegiate collectors that have a lot of guys from their college that are in the product. I am a North Dakota State collector, as a lot of you are very well aware of, but you're also all aware that North Dakota State does not have a lot of guys in product. Which is really the only reason why I ripped this was because I was wanting Trey Young, or excuse me, Trey Lance stuff. Um, so, I, I know High Series is coming out in a week or two. That's where a lot of these autos are. I don't actually believe Fields, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, any of their autos are in this product. I believe they're all in High Series. So, I think. I don't know for sure yet. I haven't seen, I haven't even looked up a checklist yet, but... <clears throat> I know I do need to, for breaking, I'm going to have to move this and see if I can zoom it out a little bit. Nope, can't. I'll have to adjust that for the breaking anyways. Um, okay, so we are going to give away Joe Tryon. Obviously, we have a bunch of UW guys on tonight. You did see a lance pulled out of, or was it out of high series? Because high series might be out. I don't know. I wasn't sure. Um, but anyway, we're going to give away Joe Tryon. Did I get any other UW guys that I can bundle with this? I think I did. Northwestern. <clears throat> Michigan. Syracuse. Charlotte. No, I think that's the only UW auto. And I don't recall. <laughs> it's staring at us all. I'm so freaking jacked for tomorrow night, guys. You have no idea. No idea. It's bad. It's very bad. Um, did I have any other UW base cards? I don't want to just do one card. I want to give away a couple... There's not a single UW base card. You gotta be flipping kidding me. No parallels. I don't believe there was a next level either. What in the crap? Alright, well, I'm going to give away something else with it then. So he's a linebacker.
here we go just because I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make it this way so with the Joe try on is going to be Sean uh, Sean Bayer tight end for Illinois or excuse me Iowa not Illinois my bad all right that's gonna be one <clears throat> the second is going to be a Michigan duo of Quinn Norton and Ambry Thomas, Michigan duo. Those are going to be the two giveaways. For tonight. So we've got a, a mix with a UW guy and an Iowa guy, and then we've got the Michigan guys. <clears throat> Not Michigan State, Michigan. Alright, I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. Okay, then the other thing that I have to work on for tomorrow night is my random.com being on this screen versus changing screens. Although, how am I set up at the moment? Sorry guys, give me a second here, I'm figuring this out. Don't worry, you're going to lose me on sound for a second. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Alright, I'm just going to have to do it like this for now. I'll do... Um, I'll add in an input for the screen tomorrow. All right, you're gonna lose me again for a second. Oh, never mind. You're not. Okay. Lists. Okay, I don't know why I did that. List randomizer. Rolling the dice. Alright, list randomizer. Who wants in? The first prize is going to be the Joe Tryon and Sean Bayer auto pair. Sorry, over here a little bit. And then the number two spot is going to be Ambry Thomas and Quinn Norton Michigan duo. Just go ahead and you know what tonight? We'll just type me again. Oh. Nikes. Just type me into chat. got Shane Jordan 
Oh, Jordan, I did get your text, by the way. Yeah, I hopefully it fixed now. I, it's, I think everybody said it was fixed. Taylor, Anthony, David, Miller, Shane, Jordan. Anybody else still on? I know a few guys hopped off as soon as we got done with the rip. But we probably still have a handful of people on. Oh, it's not a bad little product. Not too shabby. I can shut this down now. End of meeting. Zoom gone. Yeah, Zeus was on, Tony was on, uh, Shane's still on. Who else did I see earlier? There's a few guys I thought throughout. Yeah, Zeus usually hops off. He doesn't usually enter in the, the drawings. It's usually he'll, he'll skip out as soon as we're done with the rip. He doesn't. He doesn't try to win the stuff afterwards. I don't know if that he just doesn't like it or <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> oh. oh, he's coming to the Auburn show. There you go. Zeus still is in here. He's coming to the Auburn show. May. Right on. Did you talk to Ron yet, E? Well, if anybody wants in the drawing for the cards tonight, just type me in chat. Make it official. Okay, right on. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. He said he didn't know if he could put you next to me because the... Unless you want to change locations um, one of the days because he's got one guy that uh, is usually next to me, but it sounds like he's only doing Saturday. All right, Zeus is in. We've got way more people in the room. Yeah. All right. So, uh, but if you wanted to change, if you were okay with changing locations where you are one day versus the next, because you can't leave your stuff at the show, we have to take it with us. We have to take every break down and take everything with us out of the mall Saturday. But by the sounds of it, if you wanted, I believe Sunday, you could be next to me, which, but you couldn't be both days there because the guy that is normally next to me wants his spot Saturday. <clears throat> yes, if anybody else is still in here, just type me in chat. I'm going to give it about another minute and then we're going to run the giveaway. We've got four, two giveaways, two cards apiece. And then we're going to run the giveaway here in a second. Um, but yeah, next three months currently scheduled, April, May, and June are all on the schedule, two days at Auburn. And then I believe June, we're doing the Everett show again. So there's going to be three shows in June again. So busy, busy, busy. Yeah, it's, it's getting big. I, I mean, honestly, I, I'm telling people from outside the area that if you want to go to a card show that's worth it and you want to travel, the Auburn card show is 100% worth it, especially if it's two days, because we're having different vendors some days. So... <clears throat> Matches for what? 
matches in April. Matches for what? Your lighting matches? Like you're starting fires? That's not goody. You shouldn't start forest fires. That's not, that's, no, I don't recommend that. Or are you getting back into wrestling? Oh, high school tennis. I thought for a second maybe you got into Greco-Roman adult wrestling. It could happen. Alright, we're going to run the giveaway. So, let's roll our dice. Roll the dice. Eight. We're going to randomize our nifty list eight times. Un. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho. There we go. Winner. Shane taking the one spot. Anthony taking the two spot. So Shane, congratulations, sir. Winning the Joe Tryon and Sean Bayer. Anthony, congratulations on winning the Michigan duo. Ambry Thomas and Quinn Norden. Congratulations to our winners tonight we get pictures Boom. winners winner winner chicken dinner perfect all right <clears throat> and see i like this because now back to it this is nice i like having my multi multiple cameras up Okay, so I'm not going to keep you guys too much longer because it's already 8.22, and as you guys can see, my eyes are getting red because I'm tired. Um, so, um, tomorrow night's break night. Make sure you guys get into your uh, breaks if you're not already, and I don't have to say I'll see you next week because I'm going to see most of you guys tomorrow. So... Origins releases tomorrow, don't forget. National Treasures releases tomorrow. Don't forget. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's We're going to have a gap in releases. There's like not much going on until the 28th, so we're going to have a couple weeks of, uh, of some dead releases. But um, that was episode 30. I thank you guys all for joining me. Again, I want to thank Mark Magania for uh, hopping on today and uh, doing some football talk and then wrapping up with some basketball, talking about the Lakers. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. I will be going live about 4 o'clock Pacific time tomorrow for break night. Uh, breaking everything that was on the table tonight. Um, get your friends and family into these breaks. I know there's a lot of people who uh, haven't jumped in yet from my old regulars that said they were probably going to be getting in as well. So there's a good chance those will be filling up here uh, before we go live. So um, if we get all breaks sold out before I go live, I'm giving away every pack out of that box of Bowman First, uh, Bowman First Edition away during the breaks. I'll be giving those away to hitless spots. Um, so looking forward to a fun night tomorrow and, uh, let's get it everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Stay safe out there and have a good night.